Hi, hi. So, Axel, whenever you're here, please give me a sign. I'll send you a note as well. Um, I'll send you a very quick one. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. We're still waiting for Axel to join us. We'll start the talk in a few minutes about the Royal Academy. Um, I'll introduce him, obviously, um, and then we'll get a chit chat about his career and about his background. And we also have the Women in Art project uh, coming up, Women in Art Charity for Bafami, the British Friends of the Art Museum of Israel. So please get your tickets, please join us. Um, it is next week. You can buy raffle tickets, you can join the fund. It will be uh, great and we'll be honoring uh, Annette Messenger. Um, hello Alice, hi everybody, here we go. I, so Axel is just here. Axel, if up. This. Axel, I'm try trying to invite you, but it won't let me for some reason. If you can please ask to be in the live. Let me try again. This is very odd, very unusual, but I know you're here. So give me one minute. Hi, Kate. Um, yeah, Axel, if, if you can hear this, please ask to be. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Fee. Hi, everyone. So happy. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we had it starts like this. It's a bit of a It's okay. all right. Oh, just have to put it properly. Yes, it's always a bit technology, the beauty of it. How are you? I'm very, very well, thank you. All I good. Think... Yes, 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 yes. So I moved. I'm now in Paris. I don't know where you are now, sitting. Which city I'm still in? in London, you know, forever in London. I'm sort of, you know, still kind of stuck here, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gilly. So Gilly just joined us. So we can, this is why we start a few minutes before. Uh, Hi, Cynthia. A few members, people will start joining us. Um, and thank you for the Royal Good. Academy also for reposting. Story. Yeah, yeah. I promise I won't be stuttering through the talk. Um, Just getting it straight. So, okay, that's yes. the best I can do in this that's media. That's perfect. That's, that will be fine. We're interested in what you have to say. So we'll just wait um, a few more minutes. Um, and maybe, I don't know if there's anything you want to talk about. Not necessarily, uh, <laughs> not necessarily what other, you had for lunch. Other than the weather. <laughs> How was your day so far? Well, so far so good. Another you know, day full of, as we are all condemned to Zoom meetings now, one after another. So it's always a bit weird to be in this, this sort of just digital channels and never speaking really face to face. It is very in the same city and we're not. Yeah. But it's also quite frustrating to, and we'll talk about the digital aspect of being online. Will yes. people be maybe fed up and realize? Realize that real life is not that bad. Actually, <laughs> no matter how much you can fake it online, um, no, 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 it's, real life can be cool. There's a lot I'm missing about real life. So, what actually? What's the thing? And we'll just give people a 
few minutes to come. What's the thing you're missing the most then? Uh, well, I mean, really, yeah, just um, which now is gradually possible again, but just the, um, you know, easier interaction you have with people when you see them live. And also there are lots of dimensions, I think, in terms of body language. And so, I mean, you're just seeing, you know, this much of me right now. And there's always a lot missing in terms of body language, posture, you know, everything that goes with communication. Yes. And you know never mind also, yes. you know, yeah. the, the, the lack of any kind of physical contact, you know, and not, you know, being able to hug a friend or so, you know, I mean, that's also all. It's, I think that's the worst, the, the physical relationship with people. What I'll do is that I can see, hi, Alex, hi, Hazel. It's like, it's fantastic. I can see whoever's... That you don't have scribbles all over you. And then yeah. we can start the talk. So just give me one quick minute. Oopsie. Sorry. So I know it's always a bit funny. You'll see my face from very up close. Uh, and I'll put uh, Axel up. Uh, Joint. Yeah. Yes, you can, can also see. start to recognize people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll put... that, that Melanie has joined. So fantastic! It's a party now. There's all of us waving. I'll wave back. <laughs> it's, go for it! Go for it! I'm just <laughs> can't do that before, and then I'll remove the comment. Um, here, let me give me one minute. This is always a bit. Oh. Nice to see you here. Okay, I'm trying to remove this, which is obviously not working. That's fine. I mean, it's only at the bottom, so it's not. Yeah. I it's just that it's nice to have your face in it, but I don't know, but this account for some reason. Um, I think okay. I'm all, all good. Well, I think people, at, at, oh, hi, Anita. Here we go. Have to, and then we can chit chat at the end and there'll be time for questions. Yeah. It's 35, so let's start. Uh, so first of all, welcome. Thank you for taking the time on Thank behalf you. of the FAMI, the, the British Friends of the Art Museums of Israel. event which is very important once a year the gala will be on zoom again so please join uh the family account and then see what it's all about us and how we support museums and women in art that's it for the the, the blog from the family i now have the pleasure of welcoming uh, axel axel we're good. hello hello you are the ceo and chief executive of the royal academy since last year february 2019 before that you were at the Van Gogh uh, Museum in Amsterdam, um, and you had joined them in 2006. So you had a long-standing uh, relationship of heading big uh, institutions. And you actually trained as an um, art historian. Uh, you're German, born in Germany. The system works in different countries. The first obvious question, today is the first reopening of the Royal Academy to the public, has been opened for a week for its members so first things first how how did it go um well i mean it's gone extremely well and um the first few weeks of course with very limited hours because we're taking a very phased approach now and uh, the interest has been uh, you know very very good and the first few weeks are sold out already i'm afraid so um yeah we're really pleased with that but we took this very careful approach also because we could not be sure really what the public, not so much the public con appetite, but what the public confidence would be to come into central London, to come into the Royal Academy. And I should say really, I mean, people, it's funny, there's a strange irony that people are afraid to come into central London because they think it's not safe, but actually it's probably the safest part of town because it's still the emptiest part of town <laughs> it's true. It, in sort of Camden or Brixton High Street or so it's much busier than it is in Piccadilly and Regent Street right now so we really need people to come back into central London and that's also why we were keen to open so quickly 
after we were allowed to, to really help build, rebuild also the public life and public's uh, confidence. That was very important to me. I mean, it is, it is a major step and you're the second institution in London to reopen after the, the, the COVID. The I mean, we'll try not to talk about it so much about COVID. We're also fed up with it. But you, you were very another whether we were sick or not. And, and probably art, despite what some newspapers say that is the you know, least useful uh, job, which was outrageous, I think it was The Economist, without art during the confinement, it would have been a total disaster. Drawing, yeah. reading, learning, I mean, anything. The, the fact that it's reopening only to the capacity of 20%. I mean, how, how do you feel people are taking that? Did you feel, I know it's sold out, but it's, it's a tiny portion. How do you feel people interact? Are they scared to be in that environment? Are they happy? Are they still cautious? Well, I mean, I think it's a mixture of, of everything, you know. People are, you know, very happy once they're there to be there. And of course, we have also tried to do everything to make it a safe for them. Um, that's also to do with the 20%, of course, which means also that visiting the Picasso exhibition is a serene experience. And actually, how does, do we know this? It also translates in a much unexpectedly long uh, time that people remain in the exhibition much longer than they used to so you know there's clearly also um greater patience for that but i, I what you said earlier i mean i really do believe um that, that i would almost go as far as saying that during I think they also tried to keep the country and everyone at home's kind of same by you know providing the content and providing things to do and providing inspiration, because that's, of course, in any crisis, what we normally should be doing in our buildings. And I think one of the biggest tragedies has been that we were not able to do what we normally would do best, that, that is to say, come to, you know, our places, um, you know, have a sense of community, um, have escape, you know, um, but certainly benefit in a crisis from beauty, from, aesthetic, from, from an aesthetic experience. And um, also, you know, maybe, you know, seek solace and escape. So oh, none of that we could really do physically. So um, we had only the online stimuli of that. Um, and now it's so great to be able to do this live again. So, and we'll talk about the difference between the online aspect and the, the physicality of being in, a, in an exhibition. And again, people are so excited. I mean, they have Picasso for themselves, which is absolutely amazing and would have never happened. But just going back, maybe, uh, or starting with your role at the Royal Academy, we celebrated 250 years uh, last year, and Grayson Perry took on the summer show. It was absolutely amazing. It is the oldest school, uh, art school, effectively, in England. So maybe can you talk about your role and how you envision taking something that is so traditionally British and <laughs> bringing it into the 21st century with a vision of, I mean, a foreigner, as we, as we are, most Londoners, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's always a good question whether the foreigner, you know, makes such a big difference to this. And um, I mean, I have lived in this country before. I've studied here, you know, at, at a university and I have worked for seven years at the National Gallery. I've kind of done it before. You've been there before, absolutely. I have some notion of the mentality mentality and you know how things how things work here um but that aside uh, of course the royal academy you know is this enormously established um yeah. institution um with a very very hit, rich history and tradition also a ra ra rather unique structure because of course i'm in charge of the day-to-day -day running and operation of the academy but we of course also have a large constituency of our royal academicians the artists that make up the academy and of course we also lead the academy in in a certain way so you know it's a very different and for me also somewhat novel interaction and dynamic and very exciting at that um and i think i've sort of inherited the fruits of that if you like and the much expanded building and all of that it is now the moment 
to think, you know, what does this mean going forward? And I think one of the things is, or two uh, things would be, one is that the academy is a lot about art making, if you like, and it is really about the entire, not only creative process, but the first spark of inspiration through the creative and make process, but then we also exhibit and we also sell. So we really cover all, you know, in that sense, we are quite unique in that way that we sort of cover, you know, all the dimensions, how, you know, also works of art are being dealt with, if you like, and perceived and being used. So, um, and I think we need to, uh, bring that much more to the fore how unique that is and that also will mean a greater integration between at an exhibition venue a Kunsthalle if you like if you like mm -hmm. the German technical term for it um, but at the same time that we are still a working academy with students with studios and that we need to create a greater sort of integration and, and a, a sort of, you know, make more of that nexus of these um, dimensions also, you know, towards the public and integrate it more internally. That's, I think, you know, where some of the challenges lie going forward. Yes. I mean, it's, it's something that obviously the, the Royal Academy has been working towards for a while and there has um, been a refurbishment and a new, let's say, sort of branding and a new wing uh, by Sir David years now but maybe what's really unique um it is not an academy but it's unique in the sense that it's run by artists um 80 80 or so artists how how, how can you combine i mean it's, it's a traditional thing in france we had the salon des artistes français which used to be the place where everybody wanted to go artists had the power and then they sort of lost it because it became a bit a bit too conservative a bit too obvious not forward thinking enough. The Royal Academy managed to still be there and thriving. And at the same time, we've had um, the difficult news um, um, just a few days ago. Artists are unhappy. They can't voice their concern. How do you see your role in terms of, sorry, <clears throat> in terms of running the place and knowing what you're doing with the institution as a museum? Museum and letting artists who are not business people, who are, that's not their point, their point is to make great art, run a place that they, they might not have the tools to run as a business. Yeah. Where do you stand and where is the answer in terms of getting the best art in the best way for the public? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it will be a, it's a constant negotiation and sometimes tightrope walk between, you know. Uh, you know, this may be sort of overly semantic, but I would say, you know, and the official parlance is the academicians lead the academy, and that is what they do through the council and the various committees, and the professional staff, you know, run the academy. So we run it on a day-to-day -day basis and are being led by, of course, you know, the artists, their ideas, inspiration, and so forth. Um, and then, of of course, collectively, you know, with these two aspects, the artistic exper experience and expertise from their end and our professional experience, we have to come together and then, you know, um, create, you know, a great and, and so that it permits itself not to be, not being held back in its uh, exhibitions program by or determined by a collection. Because most museums in the world, of course, their exhibitions program is determined by what they collect mm. um, as we take total liberty and do, do kind of whatever we like but we need to you know also think about this now again in the current day and age to think you know w which types of exhibitions should we be doing going forward what should our profile be because also it is between you know of course we can technically do all the art through the ages but then also we have an important dimension, which is architecture, which also, you know, needs to figure in the program. So, you know, that balancing and that is also a constant negotiation. 
I mean, do you think, and on, on the back of, again, having to re-envision museums in the 21st century, we have changes and, and funding will change. And again, you get no funding uh, from the government. So every single penny has to come from within sponsorship exhibition. So even if you put on a great discovery exhibition for scholars, if it doesn't get the ticket sales, you're stuck because you cannot put on the next exhibition yeah. you're running out of fund. So how, how do you see, um, again, what the, what the future of the museum of the 21st century should be, being free from any political pressure, let's say, and you, know, you can do whatever you want, as you said, you have the artist. And at the same time, you out of all people educated um, through the Chlor Leadership Program knows exactly uh, what it's like to run a big institution and your fellow business. Uh, and as a curator, you understand, you know, the, the, the importance and the value of content. So again, and, and not trying to give like the right answer, but really going forward, what, are, what is the responsibility of the institution towards the public? Like, what do you think is the, is the way to go? Well, I, mean, I think, you know, you've cleverly rolled, you know, about 10 questions, you know, into one. And <laughs> so you can also, think. <laughs> one being, you know, the $64,000, you know. But, um, uh, yeah, of course, I mean, you know, our responsibility will be and will remain also, you know, to, to show great art, um, whatever that, that may be. Um, and thereby inspire people um, to also on their on themselves because that's what you know great art does it well it makes us think also about ourselves um, and uh, possibly to inspire also and I mean that is also where the academy of course has a rather specific role because I th think we should put somewhat a bit more emphasis also on the art making aspect so not how it is done, but also to inspire people to do themselves and to become creative. And of course, our summer exhibition is also a great expression also of individual creativity. Um, so, and will, you know, everything change so dramatically? This, that's what everyone says, because everyone thinks, you know, now it's sort of this cataclysmic moment where, you know, everything will change. And I think, well, quite frankly, that a good number of so a lot of things will come back. Uh, you know, the block, not even the blockbuster exhibit, but loan exhibitions and so are not over. You know, they will. Well. <laughs> back. Uh, you have to see, you know, how, how you fund them and, and so forth. But people will still want to see, attend events, want to see new things, you know. I mean, of course, we also need to look, look at, at our collections um, and encourage people also to see the collections. But exhibitions... You know, it's you know, you like other one of events, you know, present something special. And so we will also continue, continue with that um, and, um, you know, try to balance then. And I think that is, of course, you know, there has always been the challenge and will remain the challenge to balance a program that is popular, that is inspiring, but that also can be challenging and can also introduce you to new things that you didn't know you might like. Um, and for me and, and, and my, my team, the, the challenge is to find that sort of, you know, fine sort of middle road, as it were, between the two are challenging and will not necessarily have the ticket income balance against um, uh, also so more, more popular and, and uh, money-making, if you like, uh, aspects of the program. And also think where there might be alternative income sources as well. Well, I mean, uh, again, that, do, do you think that with, with that in mind, trying to implement that, that plan, as museums are trying to grow, and we've seen, I mean, a lot of the museums are now having help us abroad and they can do relationship. We also know that because of the crisis, now shipping, at the moment, it's going to be very hard and might be hard for, for a little bit. People are probably going to be looking a little bit more inwards and maybe the value of the local artist as not just being not as good because he's local and not as famous because the other one has you know, been 
exhibited around the world. So again, do you think there's a responsibility now to be a bit more insular, properly protecting and promoting its community because it won't have the choice and the value and the richness of it? Or you think still museums yeah. are like, we need to be? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. I mean, for me, I think I'm, I, I'm not the, the, the right person to talk to about in any kind of insular approach because you know my entire life and my entire career I have you know have had an international existence and it's also always been my you know one of my if you like ambitions to be you know much more of a citizen of the world rather than of any sort of specific area or environment and I would This comes normally also with, with economic depression, a period of uh, insularity, much more inward looking um, 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 attitudes. Um, we have already seen this coming, of course, over recent years. This is not a result of COVID. Um, and so I think arts organizations should do everything. Um, and that's my personal opinion, should really do everything to keep and a, a broad view and to to inspire people to, to look beyond the own you know their own sort of small world but open up other worlds and um, and if you cannot go there then we it's also partly our role to bring them to uh, those of us you know who cannot go anywhere else and so, uh, this sort of retrenchment which invariably will, will happen um, also, we must be really careful that we don't um, go too far with that and all just become sort of too, too far, too much inward looking. I think it's really, especially the larger organizations and institutions, it's our responsibility to keep the sort of broad perspective and, um, and um, you know, um, connect the different cultures in the world and, and keep a broad outlook. Well, and you, you mentioned uh, going uh, outside and reaching out to people who cannot come uh, so obviously that brings us to online and uh, I mean the Royal Academy reopened with a series of uh, very present um, virtual project exhibitions uh, things like that um, what is your view on again the the future of our relationship to culture and art because I mean yes video art is online it can be experienced online and that's not an issue uh, but a painting as a physicality that you can't really approach even if you can't touch a painting the the relationship is different yeah. so again what what is the um, what is your view on that for the royal academy of uh, reaching out to people and is, is the emotion the same is it is it real if you don't see it in real life yeah um i mean i think this 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 crisis now and what that the the the, the, the consequence of that of us engaging a lot more with digital media has certainly created you know, much more engagement and I think also emotional engagement, certainly. But I will still remain of the opinion that, you know, there is a last bit of the direct engagement with the physical object, whatever it may be, is still different. That the screen puts kind of a screen literally between also that experience way than from us sitting across a table in a lecture theater and you know also seeing our audience which we don't do right now um, and therefore we don't have a feeling right now also how the audience is responding to to this um, whether people are yawning or rolling their eyes or, or you know sitting on the edge of their chairs so you know in that sense there, there are invariably dimensions missing and I think I spoke earlier about the Royal Academy also being really the place of the physical because art is actually being made in the academy it smells mm -hmm. of paint in the academy Absolutely. you know so for us more than perhaps any other institution you know the physicality of the object however there be new ways of greater kind of interaction between the digital and the physical that i absolutely believe and i think um, we will also have to think and terms of concepts of exhibitions and so how physical uh, digital possibilities of whatever they may be augmented reality or so you know 
will find their way much more emphatically into this experience and there will be hybrid experiences also going forward. But I, I still stick to the uh, Benjaminian uh, notion of the aura of the work of art that no reproduction has yet fully been able to capture or reproduce as it were. Yes, I mean, this, is, this has always been the, the problem and that will maybe also change the way people produce art just because they will have to find another way but it's, it's true that something in the yeah. way like I, tapping on your personal experience you were in London before uh, you were working as a curator uh, of more traditional art uh, 19, no, not 19 a difference now in the way uh, the city maybe has changed or has approached uh, the culture and maybe how do you think you're going to use whatever you experienced uh, to bring that to the Royal Academy? What you're doing now and of course we're now in a very particular predicament because none of us could have been prepared in, in any way for you know, what we're dealing with right now and I think all, all you have is some professional experience, hopefully some life experience and intuition that will get us through the period that we're in right now. Um, more generally speaking, I, yeah, with the Van Gogh Museum, of course, I was also in a rather particular situation. Oh, people have a relationship with him. He is super famous, possibly the most famous artist on the planet. And um, so therefore, that provides already a very different relationship. That also makes, for example, that you know the digital outreach is enormous because you know the, the digital channels of the Van Gogh Museum are among the most engaged of any art museum in the world just because of the personality of the artist. So I have certainly learned aspects you know of that and also the, the commercial dimension of, of museums because we were hyper commercial at the Van Gogh Museum. Um, more so than we're probably here. So that you bring to it. And then have I seen changes? I mean, London, of course, has, um, in, you know, over those years changed. And now, of course, we are at a rather um, um, sort of uh, interesting turning point where we'll have to see how London will go forward. Because, of course, over the recent years, just the sheer physical fabric of the city, how much has been built, how much has been built up, poverty in the streets um, of course that is now up to the crisis and now we have the crisis a possibly very sharp economic downturn going forward and Brexit looming so you know it's in a way <laughs> and I would say a somewhat unfortunate perfect storm and you know we'll have to see you know what that will mean going forward and Again, we are not fully prepared for that, and we will have to also, you know, take it a bit as it comes and see how we find our, our way through that and be very nimble. And I think that is one of the things that we are learning now through this crisis is a much greater degree of flexibility, of being nimble on our feet, responding to an ever-changing environment and situations and see how we can, you know, sort of respond to that but also with limited means, you know, that is, that is also true. But how much of um, now, because of this, you think the institutions uh, will have to sort of stick their necks out because Van Gogh, as you said, is very, was a very, is a very stellar, like commercial um, entity and everybody has a relationship with Van Gogh. Real Academy, you have artists, living artists, that are dealing with issues of, of today and, and they can be difficult. Uh, positions people are for against. I mean, just Brexit, or recently you published Colin Roach, um, a former piece that he had done about the killing of an um, uh, African American citizen walking around London and it being suspicious. It is a political stance, and Black Lives Matter at the moment is very important. Uh, you have key figures, part of the academy, uh, painters and artists. I mean. How, how much do you think you can tackle the discussion without antagonizing part of your audience? Is it your role to be political? Can you not pretend anything anymore? 
that that you know this beautiful work of art is is promote <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't think it's ever really been not really political i mean there's always a political dimension to it um and um the academy of course you know is is a reflection of different opinions and also a place for debate um and that's of course once we are allowed to congregate again we hope also that we can continue the the tradition of debate and the Royal academy has to ask itself also some difficult questions because you know also the Royal academy is not a very diverse institution um of course the in more recent years and more recent appointments the uh, academician's body has um, and uh, diverse in that regard but we are not there yet and when you then look at the staff it's not really at all you have a female now uh, at the at the head which is a big well change. yes we have a female <laughs> president but i mean in terms of sort of you know ethnic background and so forth you know it is not really so we really have to ask ourselves those questions and really think how do we want to address this and how do we bring more diversity into the program also into curation um and you know the various aspects and it requires a much more determined effort um because otherwise also you know i mean it's 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 said it's been said many many times and of course this is none of this is new i think there's just a renewed urgency now to yeah. to to the challenge and to 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 the question um but of course as it was came from in 2000 by 2030 the demographic of the um i think 16 to 21 year olds will be pre predominantly non white the majority will not be you know will have a migration background and that of course means we will we will gradually lose our connection to you know the audiences if we um don't interact more with you know with the various communities and is yeah. this something you 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 think i mean in a curatorial sense uh how how do you think you're going to push that will there be any strongly political exhibitions i mean you you are you are the chief executive of the institution so you will give it the push and the direction so you really like in terms of what will happen what do you want to happen yeah well i will don't think that, that the exhibitions will necessarily i mean they on the contents itself i don't think will be you know very political in a sense um we're not necessarily going to show sort of you know um uh, activist specifically activist art but of course you know by showing and this has happened in the past you know you know that work of course you know is also being then politicized in the discourse around yeah. it um and i think some of that may well happen you know with future exhibitions that we're doing um you know i mean is it your view not not nothing is really neutral when we do marina abramovic next year you know that is a lot of that work is sort of you know highly politicized but she also leaves it open for interpretation that you can also bring your own opinions convictions and so forth to it so and i think that kind of fluidity is there but polar polarization you know as you know can certainly do it yeah it it is a difficult let me just try to put the comments uh, back on very quickly uh, so people can up so and we'll continue a little bit but if anybody wants to sorry your face is all covered with scribbles again <laughs> but if people has um comments or uh, questions that um uh, feel should be addressed about the royal academy about you about uh, being political and maybe i mean it is a hard question to answer because you you are both the establishment and the outsider being having artists and being appointed also by the queen it's it's a difficult situation to to be in and um maybe but that's just a, a personal view and i don't know open for the other to interpret i think institutions have the responsibility to bring the tools to start the conversation and not just say it's open but okay this is difficult no that that is certainly true but you have to say also you know where is it that you take a political stance and i mean 
right now, I would be the first person, you know, to take a strong stance, for example, about the value of art in this crisis situation. And, you know, that is something I can take a strong political view on this and the value of support for the arts, but also what the arts have actually delivered for free. Because you must not forget also, you yes. know, the past four months when normally we would have sold tickets um, to events. Now we were expected to push it all out there for free and make it just sort of all available. Um, so you can have strong opinions because they're rooted in our experience and in our expertise. But that is not really, you know, our, in that sense, our remit. Should we show works that potentially make it, you know, sort of a topic around that? Um, of course, you know, we should be doing that. But that is then not the RA's opinion. That is yes, yes. the individual artist or, you know, open forum then for debate. Yes, yes. I think maybe the RA should not be, and I agree with you, colored by a point of view but a platform for people to express their point of view. And as you are having all these academicians who might agree or disagree, but this is a unique place where the platform can ha happen from within. You have the people already that have the opinion. And maybe it would be um, interesting to see how much ERA can be a pioneer in that sense of um, providing that platform. Um, I don't know, again, like feel free to ask whoever's uh, online um, on YouTube. I don't know, I'm can sorry. you see? Any of the because they are comments, but I, they always disappear in my face. So. Yeah, I can see them. I can see them. Cynthia okay. has said that it's um, Whether there any questions? And timely, but it's no because business. someone is talking about, about the about the. Um, I probably think it's the summer exhibition, and um, yes, it will yes. happen in in the autumn. We, I, we fought really hard to. Those <laughs> two, but also I believe it is. Um, it has a has never been uh, cancelled in the 252 year history of the academy. So I, I was not going to be the first, you know, <laughs> the CEO to have to cancel or secretary to have to cancel it. But the other aspect is also, and that I think is much more salient and more important. The summer exhibition of the Royal Academy is unique. There's no such other open submission exhibition in the world, and. Therefore, it is also the most, for me, inspiring and most democratic exhibition that there is. And it always has a celebratory quality to it. And that is what I like uh, about it. Um, um, uh, also in this particular situation, we just uh, put online the Young Artists Summer Show. And we had, and this also speaks to the period we are coming out of when People, you know, we had 17,000 submissions when last year we had about if you like, and you know, what, what, what's been going on. And so the summer exhibition is the perfect show to have. In the well, in, in that sense, and again, we have discussed it before. I know it's hard to answer that question because of it, what is happening. And the programs are made years in advance. So even if it's not yet your own doing, can you give um, a preview of the program next year? That's Alex yeah. asking a question. Well, it's a bit tricky because we have not really announced next year's program yet. So um, um, it's, I mean, um, um, I think it is already probably out there that we are planning to do an exhibition on Francis Bacon. And so we are, and this year, I mean, still important because so much has shifted around. We had to cancel a few exhibitions, unfortunately, in the autumn. But, um, you know, after uh, now in August, we're going to show the masterpieces from the Autrup Garden post-impressionist uh, works with a strong group uh, of eight paintings by Paul Gauguin. And then we are in the, in, uh, towards the end of the year doing um, an exhibition with Tracy Emmett on her relationship with Edward Munch's work. Uh, so, that, um, so that is, you know, what's... Uh, and then, of course, it has already been communicated that the um, Marina Bramovich show has been moved by a year, so we will hopefully be able to do her exhibition then in the autumn of 2021. And then we hope to have another, a few sort of surprises still in stock, but those I will keep for now, um, and we will announce a little later. So maybe on the, on the Marina Abramovich, what's very interesting is that uh, well, because 
she and we had we honored her uh, last year as a woman in art um uh, well, yeah. one of the most amazing living artists uh, on performing arts and how you preserve art because when you're dealing with paintings it's easy you try to you know clean it once in a while and do the best you can um the marina because she won't be there forever to do it no. herself unfortunately no. and no. she knows so again how can you talk about what is the the role of the ra in terms of passing on heritage and how that can be passed on like you know it seems a bit like you know in homer and iliad like times that marina is training people that will be training people training people yeah, um, yeah. Can, can you talk about that that exhibition well i mean with with marina it's, it's of course very interesting and she's very preoccupied in her mind about you know of course the the um, future existence of performance and re-performance and she has of course also re-performed other performance artists work with their permission um, but also taking their liberties with that work and that is of course where it becomes really interesting you know because any re-performance by someone else is not going to be exactly the same thing partly also because in some um um, of her performances, Marina risks life and limb, whereas she can never ask any of her performers to risk their lives, you know, with their performance. So some of these performances cannot really be done. At least why, she why is that? I'm sorry. She if, well, she cannot. Yes, yes, of course. The one where she was placing objects in front of her yeah. and one of them was a gun with yeah. a bullet. And, she, and so she will never ask anybody else to do that. Um, but whether she would, that? she may not even give permission to do that. Um, but that, that's an interesting point because are we, I mean, is it really her, do we need her permission? Basically, if she's training artists to reenact performance, no matter how dangerous, that was the point. They were dangerous. Uh, yeah, and maybe but, today no, it will go too far. But yeah, is, it, is it, it her place to yeah, say I no? Think, I think it's, it's still her prerogative because after all, she is still the intellectual author of the work. So I think even though she, um, it's also up to her then to decide which works are to be re-performed and which ones are not. I think that is, you know. And, but it's a very specific aspect of performance art that and the Royal Academy was certainly not going to be authority on it. And, you know, it's, it's also finding your way, way through it. Then also to, again, keep the aura. So when it's not her, you know, how is then the performance still having the same kind of impact um, in a re-performance? And, you know, those are all very, very interesting questions that we will be exploring, you know, of course, through that exhibition. There are also, there will be um, displays that, that are only showing the, the elements of the performance, but not the performance itself. And so the question is, you know, what is the role of then, you know, the, the tools, as it were, without showing the performance? But that, that was a bit like the, what Daniel Buren was doing when he was doing like an institute piece and he was installing a work and taking photographs because yeah. the work disappear. But the photographs for him are explicitly not artworks. And, yeah. and yeah. in terms of Marina, it's like when you're looking at archive, are you looking at a a, yeah. a, a piece of history or like a piece itself which it can yeah, become yeah. Um, uh, somebody was asking uh, how long um, how far in advance our exhibitions plan and, and we know it's years in the making so maybe talking about what you would like to do which won't happen until like maybe three four I don't know five years can, can you give a, a hint of your, your dream uh, exhibition even if it doesn't happen can you give us something well uh, I'm I'm not so sure that there's this sort of the one dream exhibition that's always sort of a really tricky question but i mean yes exhibitions you know often take three four five years and um, now we are thrown into a slightly different reality because so much is changing in exhibitions that have a much shorter you know preparation time um which is also a good thing because it you know keeps you nimble uh, and um we will you know, I mean, what 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 I'm I'm keen on is also to be able to bring to the academy, hopefully, also some, you know, works also and art from areas in the world that have not been so much exposed here yet. Even though London is, of course, also a very spoiled market. You know, I mean, with so many museums and so many exhibitions that we have here, it's quite difficult to think of the one thing that we have not had in London yet. Um, but, um, you know, they are they're sort of still, you know, 
many things small and big that we that we can do and there are some exciting things in the in the making as it were so yeah, yeah. the short answer is like it's a surprise and you're not going to feel it's, like i'm not really going yet. to because there are some things that are close to my heart that we're thinking about right now and that is um you know we will um reveal that in good time and someone also asked about summer and winter exhibition and actually the royal academy did start of also older art um, and um, that has been mentioned again and again but we only really have so many slots you know we can do three exhibitions in the main galleries um, and, and um, I think it's sort of enough if you do a major open submission exhibition once a year and actually this year we now will have them in rapid succession because this year we're doing the summer exhibition actually in the autumn winter sort of and then the next summer exhibition there's only going to be one, one in between and so yes. it's very rapid so we also have to think about next summer summer exhibition how that can be substantially different in character so that it doesn't seem too samey yes well i mean I you have a dra uh, very recently so it takes time to put on an exhibition to answer the, yeah. the question so we'll have to sit tight and wait uh, yeah, for a little bit. because yes. we also will have to see what our means will be going forward you know i mean it's no secret that all the cultural institutions are really have to rethink their programs seriously and also their level of ambition and what they will be able to afford and so do we as well so also some of the big dream projects may just not quite you know be possible or turn out quite so big um, so it's going to be again, you know, a, a, a also a, a sort of negotiation between, between practicality and you know these sort of artistic ideals. Well, thank you, thank you very, very much. I mean, this we we touched on so many topics, and let me just uh, try to see your face again. I'll turn off the the. I don't know if I can. No, it's not going to work. But anyway, thank you. We could go on for a long time, but I think uh, we'll want to thank everybody. Uh, um, so Axel, thank you. You are the Thank CEO you. of the Royal Academy. And I, just... see, I see also my chairman of our trust, Alison Miners, has joined. Thank you, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, everything just for Pifami, the British Friends of the Art Museum of Israel, will honor Annette Messager uh, uh, next week, Tuesday, July 21st, 3.30 uh, UK time. Please see on the Pifami website or Instagram for tickets. We need to support institutions, art institutions, all of them, uh, all whatever, of them. wherever yeah. your heart goes, it's very important. Yeah. So Axel, thank you for your time. Thank and, you uh, for having me. very much looking forward to coming back to the RA now. Absolutely. We're all welcome. We hope to see many of 